Hello, my name is Hilary Chrisley and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. We are celebrating the third Sunday of Easter as people of the risen Christ. Today, the message will be brought to us by Daniel Castaneda. Daniel is our children, youth, and family director and brings Sunday school lessons each week to the Glendora United Methodist Youth Group YouTube channel. We give thanks and praise to God and join together as we share in the call to worship. We need your presence on the long road, Lord. The road between fear and hope the road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Jesus, you stand among us in your risen power. Risen One, we seek your wisdom in the midst of the questions we have about the circumstances we find ourselves in, circumstances often beyond our control, and times when we struggle to recognize you in the everyday journey of our lives. We come to you with our fears, fears that this pandemic will go on and on and on with no end in sight for the sufferings it is causing. We are also fearful that we will call the all clear too soon and things will end up being worse than they already are. Help us to turn to you as the source of our faith, our perspective, our hope. Open our eyes, light of the world, to your work and transformation in and around us. We are bombarded with images every day, O oh Christ, that shape our attitudes and behaviors. And as we walk with you day by day, may your new life be made real in what we say to others. Help us to understand the power of our words to hurt or to heal. Give us the graciousness to make all our conversations holy. As you open the scriptures to the disciples and taught them everything, open our eyes to discover you in your word 
in the beauty of nature, in the beauty of another human being, and the beauty of sacred silence. And in our seeing, may we welcome persons who are different from us, not merely as some token of tolerance for an outsider, but as a celebration of their gifts and grace. You are known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. May your resurrection presence guide us in the decisions we make about what we eat and what we drink. Help us to understand our eating and drinking are not to be abused or approached mindlessly, but are ways that you give us to nourish ourselves and to draw us closer to you. Feed us body and soul with your grace. We thank you that you travel with us in our joys and our concerns. Feed us all with your hope, your mercy, and your grace on this rocky path we travel together. Thank you for hearing us as we join together in our desire to walk with you in all things. As we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We offer ourselves in this time of worship. If you are a member of a faith community, I encourage you to give of yourself to God through your faith community. It was disciples in the early church, like the ones at Emmaus, who offered Jesus what they had. They offered their company, their table, their bread. We are so grateful that Jesus is with us as we offer our love our devotion, our gifts, and we offer ourselves to God so that our eyes may be opened to the holy presence among us, now and always. Amen. Let us join in singing, Jesus at the center of it all.
Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center, everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. On that day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, well, What are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who was unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and other people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. 
They came to us saying that they'd even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found these things just as the woman said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interrupted for them the things written about himself in all of the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When he came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took a seat at the table with them, he took his bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't their hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures to us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Samuel. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. So I have a little confession. I usually have two ways of responding to a crisis situation. I'm either very relaxed, very even keeled, calm like, or I'm the complete opposite. And I'm panicking and I'm overreacting. And there's never a middle ground for me. Maybe some of y'all can relate. So when this COVID-19 situation happened in the beginning, I actually started out being really, really calm about it. I was very even keeled, very peaceful about it. But as things started to progress, as they quickly did, I found myself looking at the news a lot. I was watching CNN. I was looking through, reading through articles that were you know, related to the COVID-19 or related to what I should be doing, what I should be trying to prepare for. And so I started to, you know, inform myself of what was happening, all in effort so I could stay prepared, so I could get in front of everything. And, you know, when I first saw everyone doing the panic shopping, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna take part in that. And then I started to wonder, what if there's no toilet paper? What if there's not things like bread, eggs, uh, you know, the staples that you need in your house? And I started to think like, well, then I started to go ahead and do some online shopping. And then I started to like send links to family and friends and said, hey, do you know you can get your groceries uh, delivered? Do you know that you can <clears throat> get your produce here uh, delivered to your front door? And I started to find sites. Here's where you can get your bread. And, and I, I found myself in this very active role in trying to stay prepared and informed. And then one day I woke up and I started to feel a shortness of breath. Now, I've had asthma attacks way long ago, like maybe, I'm talking years ago. And for the most part, I'm pretty healthy. I, I'm an active lifestyle, I work out, I eat pretty clean, at least I try to. Uh, haven't had an asthma attack in years. But for some reason, in this particular day, I started to have a shortness of breath. And obviously from all my article reading and watching the news, I was privy to the fact that people who have had respiratory issues, asthma, could be susceptible to the COVID-19. And so obviously my mind starts to go to the worst possible place. So throughout the day, I'm still feeling the shortness of breath. Finally, I decide I'm, you know, I'm gonna tell my girlfriend what's happening. My girlfriend who is a marriage and family therapist, I started to tell her, I said, you know, I'm starting to feel shortness in my breath. And I may be having an asthma attack or even worse, I might even be sick. And she very lovingly, very kindly, like she always does, she just looks at me and she says, Daniel, I don't think you're having uh, an asthma attack. 
I think you might be having a panic attack. And she was right. Because the very next day, I didn't feel any of those symptoms. It's interesting what happens to the mind when you start to get fearful. It's interesting what happens to our minds and our hearts when we start to experience panic, when we start to experience fear. It's sort of like what is happening in the story today. We got two followers that uh, followed Jesus, but it's now been, Jesus is dead, and it's now three days after, and they're on their way to Emmaus, which is a city that is completely opposite of Jerusalem. The, the city, the Jerusalem's a place that they should be. They should stay there because that's where Jesus told them to wait there for him. Instead, they're on the opposite road, on the way to a place they shouldn't be going to. And on the way going up there, Jesus finds them. And the interesting part is that Jesus, they don't even recognize it is Jesus. They just think it's a stranger. And they're sad and they're distraught and they're hopeless. And Jesus has this way of just starting this conversation up with them like, hey, what's going on here? What are you two talking about? Why do you guys look so down? And I, the response that they give is really telling of where their mindset was because right away, one of them, Cleopas says, do you not know what's happening? about Jesus of Nazareth who was supposed to be the one to save us and 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 take care of us and change everything he starts off with his expectations because his expectations of what he thought was going to happen as he thought Jesus was going to change everything all in that moment and didn't happen and then he follows that up by giving a list of different reasons events that took place that got him to the point where now he is where he is now, which is hopeless, distraught, depressed, and basically that he's given up. He starts off by saying, uh, Jesus was held captive. He was crucified. It's now been three days he has not been resurrected. In fact, two women who were with us went down to the tombstone early this morning and found no body whatsoever. So he gives them a list of reasons that basically is supporting and feeding the fear he's having, the fear they're having, that what if Jesus is not the Messiah? And I love what Jesus does in that moment. First off, it needs to be noted, Jesus is walking with them as they're going in the wrong direction. As they're on their way to Emmaus, he is walking with them. He's present. He's there walking alongside of them. And then he does something that's really interesting. He kind of says, wait a minute. It's, isn't the Messiah supposed to be going through the being crucified? Isn't he supposed to die for the remission of sins of the world? And then he follows up that statement by basically going through every single prophet, every single prophecy that's ever been made about the Messiah. He goes through it all the way from the book of Moses. He goes all the way down there and he, he lists them up. And what is he doing? Why is he listing out all these other facts? He's feeding their faith. He's not feeding their fear. He's actually taking them through all these different reasons that should support that they should keep faith that Jesus is the Messiah. And I love that about God because I don't know about you, but I gotta ask myself, what are we feeding ourselves? Are we feeding our faith or are we feeding our fear? And I say that because 
what are we watching? Is there a line between being informed, which is good, which is great, which we all want to be in the know of what's happening, but when does it get to a point when it's not being informed anymore? It's causing panic. What are we reading? Are we reading articles of, you know, this is pandemic happening, this emergency is taking place. What are we talking about with our friends and our family? Is it always about, you know, the staying at home all day? Is it, you know, uh, the symptoms, the, the news said this, the government said this, the government, it can go on and on. Is, are the things that we are talking about, are we talking a lot of fear or are we talking a lot of faith? And I'll be honest with you, I am guilty of that. Guilty as charge. Because that whole time that I was sitting there and I was, you know, panicking and I was trying to be informed and smart and get this news feed and find my toilet paper and find this and find this online, you know what I wasn't doing? I wasn't reading my word. I wasn't feeding my faith. I wasn't starting my day praying and doing my devotions. I started my day looking at CNN. I wasn't going throughout my day meditating on God's promises and his, his word. I was meditating on how am I going to get bread. I even asked the pastor if she can help me get some ingredients so I can learn how to make my own bread. This, this is how I have never made bread in my life. And here I am thinking of how do I make bread? I think we all experienced fears and those moments where we finally have it catch up to us. And you may not get to the point where you're like me having a panic attack. But it always catches up to us. But even then, the interesting thing about what Jesus did for those two followers as their way on their way to Emmaus is the things that he can do for us now. First off, Jesus is with us even as we're on the road of COVID-19. He's with us and he will talk it out with us. We can come to him and we can talk to him about our fears, our doubts, our expectations. We can go and say, God, why would you let this happen? Why aren't you making this better? Why aren't you healing more people? We, it, God can handle those hard and tough conversations. He's not scared to have that, but he wants you to have it with him. And when we bring that to him, let's allow God to do exactly what he did to those two followers. Let, let's let allow God to be able to feed our, our faith and bring us evidence of why we need to keep our faith, that Jesus is with us, that he will take care of us, that he will love us all the way to the ends of the earth. And even beyond that, past eternity, if there's, I don't even know if that's a real thing, but he loves us so much and he would never leave us because the, the real thing is that God never promised us that we would avoid sickness, disease, and all of the imperfections that we have in the world. We live in a very imperfect world, full of sickness, disease, and unfortunately full of bad things that people do. And that's a reality. But the one promise that God has given us is that he is with us through it all. And as we have our own expectations, like those two followers had certain expectations of what they thought God was going to change around. Let's, let's allow God to check our expectations and change our perspective so that we can see things for what they really are. Because my favorite part in that story was at the end when they're sitting down to have supper, Jesus is having, sitting down to have supper with the two followers and he blesses the bread and he breaks it. And the minute he breaks the bread, their eyes open 
and they finally realized that this whole time they had been speaking and talking and hanging out with Jesus. Jesus was always there. My hope and my prayer for you is that Jesus will open your eyes so that you can see that he is with you even now throughout all the uncertainty, no matter what the news is saying, no matter what the government is saying, no matter what you're seeing with your own eyes, we can have no doubt that God is with us and Jesus is here to calm us, to be with us, to feed our faith and not our fear. I'll be praying for you. Thank you for listening to my message and hope to see you all soon. I look up towards the sky, eyes fixed on you. Your presence is where I hide. Above every fear I rise, eyes fixed on you, and you'll never leave my side. Through fire or flood, through wind and the waves, I'm falling. I 
When we look into the horizon and try to picture where we want to go. God is beside us on the path. We are not alone, and though it sometimes feels that way. God is beside us on the path. When we have dreams and nightmares about where we will end up. God is beside us on the path. When we've been given so much advice that we wind up even more confused. God is beside us on the path. We want the right school and the right job. God is beside us on the path. When we are worried about money. God is beside us on the path. When we have problems with our memory. God is beside us on the path. God will walk with us. God is beside us on the path. God will carry us when we are tired. God is beside us on the path. We are servants of God. God is beside us on the path. God would never have us make decisions alone. God is beside us on the path. All things are possible. God is beside us on the path. Amen. Amen. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. His cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. His loving death shall never die. Christ is alive. Friends, go now, as those who have met with Christ this day. Go now as those whose hearts have burned with faith within them, as the scriptures were explained. Go now as those who have been transformed by resurrection. And may the blessings of God be upon you body, mind, and spirit. Amen. <laughs>